There's nothing like going on a holiday with your best friend. You gotta have fun. <laughs> you just gotta. There are very few people who know you more. You are adorable. We gotta put it up. That's why Andy's trusted Hamish to plan his activities. What is that? And Hamish has trusted Andy to do the same. Ah! Now, Every day, they'll take it in turns. Would you like to make five million dollars today? Yeah. To reveal what adventure is planned for the other. So this feels like you've picked something you really want to do. No. And together, <laughs> they'll create their perfect holiday. Our perfect holiday continued with another way too small plane back to Alaska. And with my nine-star general safely on the ground, it was time to get him to the next activity I had planned at the foot of Nick Glacier. Well, obviously we're in a helicopter. We are in a helicopter. Unless it's the ultimate bluff and you <laughs> we're going scuba diving, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dog. You wouldn't go to a haberdashery store without checking out the bedding. I guess not. And we wouldn't go to Alaska without checking out dog sledding. It might be cold, so bring a warm hat. You've already got one. Thank you. And there's maybe a secret twist, but forget I said that. Yeah, so don't worry about that. OK, <laughs> so we're going dog sledding. That sounds fun, doesn't it? <laughs> but what about the, the secret twist? We've forgotten about it. I so, haven't, though. Yeah, well, you should. That was the instructions of the card. You've got to obey the card. Yeah. Good. You've forgotten about the secret twist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it a bit. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. It's but, crossing my mind. But the good news for me is I feel fine about it. <laughs> so it was into the chopper for a 20-minute flight. Obviously, we had a bit of time to harvest some low-hanging fruit for social media. Then landed on the top of Nick Glacier, home to Justin and Rebecca and their 40-odd champion sledding dogs. Fancy seeing you guys up here. Welcome to Alaska. Do you guys live up here? We do. We're here May through August. You, you live on the glacier? We do. This is our camp. This is our home. Why isn't there a supermarket? It's actually right there on that helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> so everything's chopped in? Everything comes in. In fact, all, all the dogs came in in the back seat of the helicopter you guys rode up in on. Really? Yeah, we put 12 in at a time. Uh, all the buildings. Did you wind the windows down so they could stick their heads Pretty out? Pretty much, Dogs yeah. like that. Justin, Rebecca and their few chopper loads of dogs live on the glacier 18 days at a time, at a level much closer to camping than glamping. One hut for a bedroom, one hut for a kitchen, and... Uh, no, that's it. Actually, that's all the huts. Um, no dogs inside or allowed to have a dog inside? We live with dogs 24-7. So, is there anywhere the dogs can't go? Yeah, there's a couple places. OK. That's very cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> but Justin and Rebecca endure the isolation and, you'd assume, terrible internet connection to train their champion dogs for an event called the Iditarod, a 1,600-kilometre dog sled race, sometimes called the toughest race on Earth. So how long does it take you to do your 1,600 kilometres? Like, what's the winning time? Well, back in the day, in the 70s, it used to take them about three and a half weeks, and now we're doing it in eight to 12 days. Like, for example, each dog will eat somewhere around 12,000 calories a day on Iditarod. That would be like us eating 70 cheeseburgers a day. How do you carry that many cheeseburgers for the dogs? <laughs> that's, that's impossible. As we strolled through the cute little suburb of tiny plastic dog igloos, Andy naively did a wee, which gave me the opportunity to grab Justin to talk to him about the secret twist. So, by the way, if anyone has forgotten about the secret twist, you can now start thinking about the secret twist again. I have bought what can only be described as a meat suit for Andy. <laughs> my wish, my dream is for us to create this, like, side sport. I don't, I'm not saying it's going to be in the next Olympics, but some sort of exhibition sport where we've got Andy out in front as the... As uh, bait. As bait, I guess. <laughs> as, a, as, like, mobile food in so the So you're fishing suit. with Andy. That's exactly right. Justin understands fun. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> now, here's something that will surprise you. Mm -hmm. There's a twist. <laughs> No, it won't surprise me, because you told me. I did, I did hint to me there was a small, small surprise twist. Mm -hmm. What would we say the two things dogs love? Running, food, really. And attention. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're going to get all three today, because they will be running mm -hmm. for some food, and you bet they'll have attention, because we'll be staring at them. Here's the great bit. You're the food. I've organised what can only be described as a meat suit. <laughs> meat suit. It's ice hockey pads yeah. covered in meat. There is a meat helmet as well. So you're protected. He's protected. I'm not a rabbit for, for a great... No, you're not. Right. I would never debase you like that. You're just a human being in a meat suit. And what's, what's the meat? Doesn't matter. Too true, Rebecca. Bring out the meat! Put this prosciutto on your melon. <laughs> 
<laughs> so not necessary. <laughs> this is absolutely not necessary. The dogs are this high. <laughs> mm, sorry, Ando. Last time I checked the rules, the meat doesn't get a say. <laughs> Now that's the look of a man that has just seen his favourite new sport. <laughs> but while you guys were laughing it up, I needed to know the rules. So here's what we're thinking. Okay. We're going to put you uh, on the third marker. Yep. Yep. If you guys are getting running start... I'm at, sorry, at... just can't take anything you're saying that seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you're very popular with the dogs for some reason. So as I gathered my thoughts, Justin gathered his best dogs for the chase. And I did heaps of stuff as well. Checking on stuff, looking over stuff, still doing it. There I am. Yeah, still doing it. Still just checking on things. Yeah, good, still doing it. All right, is the bait happy? The bait, I'm not referred to as the bait. Well, you are the bait, because we're trying to catch <laughs> the meat man. excitement. And the excitement was palpable. As the bait... I have a name. ...made his way out to the starting line with a few opposition players in tow. His job was simple. Make it from here to here before the sled dogs that love meat caught him. Yeah, he has no chance. I'm just hoping at least uh, six of those ten dogs are vegan. These guys really want to go, don't they? They love it. This is what they love for. Today, we find out, as we always do in the sport of meat suiting, can we beat the meat? Let's find out, gang! The meat was stretched and tender. The dogs were... Well, they always want to run. It was race time. Are you ready, Andy? Oh, look at Ando, thinking that a slight crouch will help. Oh, and I thought the puppies were cute. Oh, oh, holy moly! The dogs were out of the blocks with explosive speed. These are some quick pups. But Ando was off to a surprisingly decent start. Then, tragedy. The meat is down! The meat is down! I was down, but not out. Just like the Iditarod races, I dug deep and kept going. And with the finish line in sight, maybe I was going to make it. The dogs are hungry! Go, pups, go! Maybe the meat would complete. Yes! Get him! Get him! Get him! Eat him! Maybe I'd... Uh, no. The meat is being Ah, uh, no, the, damn it. Got, yeah, got me easy. Well, that's all we've got time for. The Alaskan Meat Suiting International once again goes to Chase Team <laughs> as we defeat the meat. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks, H-Dog. Well, as our triumphant winners sled away, one can't help but think that sport was the real winner today. That and the butcher who charged me a fortune for the meat. And this little guy. He's great. What a cute doggo. Look at him. He thinks he's a husky. Or, to say it in a dog person voice, you think you're a husky, don't you? Yes, you do. You think you're a husky. Woof. OK, shouldn't do that voice on TV. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you. Cheers to the meat. How'd you feel? Often, things we do have... We have a learning out of them. What was the learning today, then? Just if you're the meat, watch your footing. <laughs> if that ever applies again in life. Great advice. How could I ever repay him? Would you like to make five million dollars today? Well, next, I'd assemble a crack team... Matt. Tracy! Harold! Yes? ...to take Hamish... Were you fishing for brown trout? ...on a high-stakes treasure hunt. <laughs> Our next perfect holiday adventure took us to Boulder, Colorado, for something that had been over 30 years in the making. What's up? <laughs> Can I come in? You got a weapon? No, I haven't got a weapon. Come in. Thank you. <laughs> well, I uh, passed Hamish a security check and gave him some mail. My money from Nana. Oh, well. Question. Would you like to make five million dollars today? Answer. Yes. Fairly long explanation for this, so... How long does it take to say, we're doing 24 hours of scratches? It's not that, Haim. It's this. There is a guy called Forrest Fenn who, in 1988, sold heaps of his belongings to buy treasure. And we're going to rob him. No, we're not going to rob him. Back to my animation. Fenn buried the treasure somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, leaving a series of clues as to how to find it in a poem. So it's a cryptic poem. It's a cryptic poem. I love cryptic poems. Cool. I'll stop interrupting the animation. The Rocky Mountains take up over 300,000 square kilometres of the United States, so the treasure is tough to find. And despite hundreds of thousands of people looking for it since 2010, it's still out there. And we're going to find it. Well, that's what we're hoping for. Are we really? I reached out to a guy called Matt. Matt is positive of where the treasure is, but... So am I. He, how? 
I just, what does Matt say though first? No, no, you have I'll to go first. No, I'll see if it lines up. <laughs> Don't laugh, Ando. You know my vibe is very powerful if deployed correctly. Matt thinks it's in Colorado. That's why we're here. That's not we're a lining up. No, we're lining up. <laughs> no, it's not a wind My wind vibe wind. and Matt's is lining up. Gee, my vibe skills were going to be crucial to finding this treasure. Uh, well, my vibe was that we needed to see Matt, so we set off to do that. Is this Matt with the blue hat? Yep. God, he's ready to hunt. <laughs> He's bought a big water bottle. <laughs> and it was good to put a face to all my email correspondence. Explain to Hamish how long you've been looking for this treasure. Uh, probably close to five years now. Five years? Yeah. How many people are out there looking? Uh, last I heard was like around 35,000. 35,000 people are looking for the treasure? Yeah. Andy told me that like, you've got a spot you've never been to? That's right, yep. And you're confident? Yeah, pretty sure. So pretty you... sure? <laughs> yeah, because I mean like a lot of the, uh, clues kind of like fit that area. The clues Matt's referring to are the ones left by Finn in that poem I was talking about earlier. I've got good news. Remember I emailed you and said, if you had a chance to ask Finn any questions, what those questions might be? Yeah. We've got a video of Finn answering your questions here. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep, through some exhaustive wrangling, the reclusive Finn, who owns a lot of boots, had agreed to answer our questions on tape. Hi, Andy, I'm Forrest Finn. I'm here to answer your questions whenever you're ready. I knew this was a strong bargaining chip, so I had to clear something up with Matt. If we find it, what kind of percentage do we get and you get, do you think? We'll always go by what's the most fair, and that's splitting it equally between everybody who's in the party. So, you know, there's how many of us here, like, Probably around... Oh, don't uh, worry about the camera. Oh, no. oh. oh yeah. Don't, they don't get a share. We we like like eight, we've got it's like eight crew. You're going to get less than 10%. No, no, no. Dale's putting his hand up for some. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dale, we are cutting you out. And we presented a 50-50 split between us and Matt. you got to get 50%. But then you guys got to split a 50. We're happy. Happy to split it 2.5. Which side are you on? <laughs> Gee, Matty really needs to work on his negotiation skills. I don't think he understands who he's up against with Andy. Oh, God, I'm excited. Very excited. We had a team of three, and that was soon to become four as I introduced the guys to Tracy Brown. Tracy, how are you going? A this body language Matt. expert who I thought could give us crucial information from watching Finn's answers on the video. Yo, wait a minute. Are y'all going to cut me in on this treasure, though, once we get this dialed in? Mm. She's good. She's got a bit of Andy Lena. <laughs> We had discussed Matt giving up a fair bit of his percentage for you, Trace. Is that dog. okay? You're a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Business dog. Uh, Tracy, we can give you 5% out of our end. How about seven? Make seven. Seven percent of our end? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What the heck? The guy that only bought Vibe had just given away my stake. Anyway, time to watch the video. I think we have a pretty nice shot here. Now you're gonna have to speak loud because I'm not wearing my ears. Now, Trace, at the moment, he's just discussed um, framing and mm -hmm. audio. Any clues yep. thus far? Well, I'm, I'm looking for his normal way to behave, so oh, we're getting that Are off you of this. Line? Yeah, I'm getting his baseline. Okay, great. Here we go. Has the location you have chosen for the treasure always had a special meaning to you? Well, Andy, I, always is a long time. I, I'll, I'll just say that where I hid the treasure is a very special place to me. Uh, and, and I really don't want to elaborate on that. And that hasn't been his whole life. It's recent. You reckon? Yeah. Tracy is my new favourite okay. human. Have you ever been to El Dorado Canyon? Uh, now, Andy, you know I'm not going to answer a question like that. He has. He's been there. Yes! <laughs> so Finn had been to a place called El Dorado Canyon. And Matt had that spot in mind because of the poem. We had to see part of the beginning of it because the first part is begin it where warm waters halt. From what I heard someone tell me this about uh, El Dorado Springs is originally it used to be a hot spring. Mm -hmm. And when they built the pool, they, they, they did something like when in construction and they ended up causing the waters no longer to be um, uh, thermal pools anymore. Oh, it just warm waters have stopped. I'm getting you know, gold tingles. Oh, wow. I'm getting gold tingles. <laughs> I was vibing so hard you could have sold me at Sexyland. Let's make five mil. So it was off to El Dorado Canyon. And at the base of the mountain, I introduced everyone to the crucial fifth and final member of the team. Harold! Hello! His skills were going to guarantee us the win. Maybe you explain <laughs> what you do, Harold. Um, I douse. He douses. So these are rods. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we're going to do two different things. First, uh, you know, is there a treasure here? And so my answer is yes. Wow. Okay. Perfect. That's what we thought. <laughs> Yes, mate. Can you just double check it's not like a treasure, like it's not like a national beauty treasure? No. Great. Like, are these things going to be at a point to where the treasure might be? Well, what I was going to do is use this map. Yeah. And you already have a pretty good idea, I assume. Maddie, this is you. Where? This system is unfatable. You just put your hand on our search zone. Over here, it's a little bit more um, secluded. Secluded, yeah. OK, Harold, that's your information. I'm okay. deploying you. Go now, for it. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear anything you said. Good strategy. Because what I'm going to do is go like this and wait for this to turn when I see it, OK? OK. So we'll start here. And I'm doing an X and a Y, right? So completely forgetting what Matt said, Harold made his way along the map. Oh! Oh, look at that. OK, so, so kind of mentally make a note of that. And okay. double-checked it from a different direction. Make it happen. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. We had it. Harold matched the same place. I love science so much. All the clues so far have lined up, but things are about to get even more crazy. Brown trout. We just saw the trout fisherman. See? A blaze. blaze. Yeah. I still get that way. Hey, Nick! There's almost nowhere else it could be! There's nowhere else it could be! We were in Idaho Springs, Colorado. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Following clues from a poem in order to find $5 million worth of treasure. Matt, Tracy and Harold were all helping us. Speaking of that, would everybody like a drop of oil? What's I don't the know. Oil? What do we need that for? It's 45 different oils plus gold. Oh, oh it smells I, great. I feel it in too. Like, can I smell some jojoba? No, no jojoba. Rose hip? Uh, nope. Gee, your vibe was off here. Lavender? Yes. I'm back. Well, that's a relief. Just in time as we arrived at our chosen spot and we readdressed the clues in the poem. Put in below the home of the brown. Excuse me, sir. Were you fishing for brown trout? Yes. Brown trout. We just saw the trout fisherman. Yes. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down, your quest to cease. And as we all chatted, uh, Harold just did his thing. We really are looking that way? for the all blaze. Right. Oh, Harold, have you got a we got to answer. Down get that way. Awesome, Harold. Everything was adding up perfectly, so we set off to the area Matt had chosen and Harold had confirmed before we split up for a more thorough search. Because Andy's off with Matt. They've been gone for six or seven minutes. I'm honestly a little concerned for Matt's financial Matt's future. Matt's going to come back with 15% left. Matt's going to come back two million in debt. OK. Yeah. Matt? Yeah? Did Andy discuss any percentages with you? No, we were just looking at the map. How? This how hurtful. A snake can't get hurt, for it has no feelings. <laughs> no, Just be careful, Winnie. I don't want you to be alone with Andy anymore, all right? OK. With Matt's finances back secure, we sat down to collect our thoughts. Can I throw something out there? There's a ruin up here, Craig's Hotel. Yep. You were telling me about that, Tracy. Yep. You can still see the the kitchen area, the What um, happened to the hotel? Place? It burned. It burned? See? A blaze. blaze. Hmm. There's still dishes up there? <laughs> <laughs> that would probably make sense because he said that he did say he. What, what was oh. that? What was that? A yes or a no? Uh, that was a yes. So it'd, it'd be a room. Is it? Yeah, I get a yes. Well done, Harold. There was one last problem. Yeah, it's a hike. It's uphill. Harold, at your age, do you have a strong enough heart to get there? I think so. Yes. No, just ask the rods. Great, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling good about this. So up the mountain we went. Look how beautiful this is. You said you wanted Lord of the Rings. Yeah, huh? You've got Lord of the Rings. Totally like it, right? We were like hobbits, Matt. But instead of tossing a ring into lava, we get $5 million at the end, which I think's a better deal. Wow. And an hour and a half later, OK, we've made it. There she is. All right. The old blaze. <laughs> the old blaze. Now. Gee, I hope this is worth it. <laughs> how, are you, how are you holding up? Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Just we reminded on. ourselves of the poem. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down, your quest to cease. Harold, I'm going to start sweeping. As soon as you work out exactly the angle, down back down to the creek. I get in the creek, and I'll know it when I see it. OK, so I'll start. OK, okay start. Come on, on magic sticks. Oh, yes! yes! There. So we had our exact location. We were there, yeah? We yeah. confirmed it with Harold. 
Right. We're cooking. We're cooking. And headed back down the mountain. So that's where we were. Sadly bidding farewell to Harold because I'd booked him on a flight back to Phoenix at 7 pm and he was going to miss it. Very Goodbye, good. old friend. You're like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. It's only far, so far you but can take us. Gandalf, who has got a job interview tomorrow, so he's like shaved and cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> it had been four and a half hours of scientific searching to get to this position. We'd use code breaking, vibe, and sticks, all the tools. We consulted the poem one last time. See? So hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If you're brave and in the wood... Right there, yeah. Yeah. I give you title to the gold. Everything had lined up, so I waded into the water, knowing full well that underneath this log, that treasure trove worth $5 million would be waiting. The temperature was low, but my vibe was high. And as I reached under the log, Fen's words ringing in my ears. I think somebody's gonna find the treasure. I felt something. But crazily, it was very untreasure-like. Andy! <laughs> this doesn't make sense! I mean... There's almost nowhere else it could be! There's nowhere else it could be! So, with heavy hearts, we regrouped on the shoreline to work out what went wrong and to play one of mine and Andy's favourite games, the blame game. Harold did leave at a pretty interesting time. Did you notice that? Oh, hey, I'd like to hear more about this theory. Yeah, he just took off right when it was going to turn one way or the other. Yeah. Do you reckon Harold has seen it and is... He's coming really... back for it. He's coming back for it. it. Yeah. Wait, who's seen it? Harold, maybe. Yeah, Harold. Oh, who's been? Oh, you mean the, the, the soothsayer guy with the sticks, Yeah, right? the guy's been with yeah. us all night. <laughs> that forgetting Harold did make me question why I'd trusted him with this whole adventure from the beginning. Thank but you. it didn't matter. Thank We'd you had a wonderful much. day. High five. High Wish five. was a high five million. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ando, I guess there was nothing left to do but hit our hotel and drink the oh, celebratory baby. champagne I bought a little bit prematurely. Yeah. <laughs> Very warm. Very warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, did that come out Andy's nose? Yep, there it is, both barrels. And it comes at you. It really comes, it really comes at you. I didn't think it would do that. Did you celebrate it in your mouth, I suppose? <laughs> Another perfect day on our perfect holiday. Next on our perfect holiday, after Andy's lengthy pit stop, I took us to Kentucky, the home of 11 secret herbs and spices, a very popular derby, and a very unnecessary delicacy that I just knew Andy would really appreciate. Is this someone's house? Yes, but read this before we go in. It will help prepare you for what lies inside. OK. Whoa, calm down. Chill out, bro. Why are you raging at me? I wasn't. Is your blood sugar low? I do seem like you're raging. Good news. As always, I've got your back. I brought you here for a delicious snack. Because you seem like you got pretty low blood sugar today. I thought you were hungry. We drove past so many service stations no, like on the way here. I promise you they don't serve what you're about to eat. Are you going to have any? I'm full. But as a true mate, I could tell Andy was desperate to eat anything. You would never classify this food as an on-the-beaten-track specialty. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just waited here. I was just... I'm lashing you up like a horse. Though they know it's a surprise for you. And by they, I mean Micah, Kimberly, and spectators. I mean, they're kids. Hi, kids, how are you going? <laughs> Andy doesn't know. He doesn't know yet what okay. he's having. But I'm just double checking. I've been telling him this is a delicacy. It's a, what, what could you say, a select delicacy? <laughs> well, you wouldn't find it many other places no. in the world. <laughs> no. You want to say, yeah. yeah, I do. So Micah walked me across to show me Andy's meal. It's squirrel brains. A dish that became popular during the Depression because money was scarce and squirrels weren't. All these older folks, they ate everything. So, like, the 20s? No waste. Yeah, you're talking no waste. And so my this grandfather, is... my great aunt, everything that was just normal, that stuff was normal. So it would be and totally so it normal to come home down. at the end of the day and eat a squirrel. Yeah. See, and it's a totally normal, done thing. I wish I hadn't eaten beforehand. That's a good idea. Start Googling worst things you can... The worst thing you can eat in America. Pop-tarts. It's a bit harsh. <laughs> a bit harsh for Kellogg's, isn't it? What meat is it similar to? Is it like a small chicken of the tree? <laughs> chicken of the tree, um, yes. Very similar to a rabbit. Do you know what it is? I do know what it is. <laughs> Any hints? I may have saved an extra special something there too for you. Great, what is it? It's in her nuts. The nuts of... <laughs> yes! <laughs> 
So it's the squirrel's brain and the squirrel's nuts. <laughs> So there's tiny squirrel testicles in there. Yeah, go give me a spoon. Well, 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 I had not anticipated an entree. See? Voila. That's squirrel. It's a squirrel testicle. If you'd have shown it to me in a lineup, I wouldn't have guessed it. <laughs> but now that you've told me what it is. That's, a, that's a, an endowed squirrel. Brains and testicles? Andy was a very lucky boy. Did he have this planned before I got him with the hottest chilli, or is this... Has this been planned after? It didn't matter, Amber, because lunch was ready. Where are we eating? We're not eating anywhere. Where am I eating? Inside. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought Andy inside, and my hangry friend had a lot of questions. Is it an animal? You bet. Am I eating a part of it? Yes. Is it the penis? No. <laughs> no. Greedy nuts. <laughs> Question time's up. Lunch was served, everyone. What is that? Is it a ra it rat? It is not. It is not a rat. <laughs> it is a steamy, hot squirrel. And you do not have to eat all of it, although you can eat all of it, can't you? You can. The surprise entree was up first, and if I knew one thing for sure, Andy was going to have a ball. Can I find out what this is before I eat it? You know how you asked about the penis? Mm. You were warm. Close. <laughs> It's not, it's a testicle, isn't it? <laughs> Bingo, Andy. Part one of Kentucky's own balls and brain combo meal. Micah and Kimberly were waiting, mate. You're being rude. Come on, off you go. Oh, not in your mouth. <laughs> no. <laughs> where, where is it? It was just up here. <laughs> Andy gobbled that nut down very quickly, but... He still seems hangry. I'm not. I I'm really not. Well, it would be very rude to ignore the surprise main course. That's its head. That's a little squirrel head. Now, you can't eat the whole head. I don't want to. No. <laughs> you just want to eat what's inside. It's like, it's, like, it's like cracking up in an oyster. You ever eat oysters? I don't eat oysters. You ever eat a hot squirrel brain? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is something that, that came in the line with it's like my family, a lot of southern families, because during the Depression, they didn't waste anything. Couldn't afford food. Like, we're talking, ate everything. Mm. So learn to eat every bit of the food. And if you learn that skill, your weekly shop will be zero, if you learn this skill. <laughs> Would we all agree that we're out of the depression now and we can oh, perhaps get McDonald's You don't know away. what's going to happen, do you? OK, so what happens now? Well, Ando, you find the brain. It's usually in the skull. Oh, wow. Yep, in there. Oh. There's no mistake in that. That's a tiny little brain that loves nuts. And then... I can't bring myself to put this in my mouth. One second, please. <clears throat> I'll do the countdown. I'll do the yep. countdown. OK. Yeah. Five, four, three, two. Put those squirrel brains in your mouth. Yes, chew it up. Do you want me to hold your nose? <laughs> How are those brains tasting, Ando? How are those squirrel brains? so I think it was a hit. He hasn't said he doesn't like it. I love this, is what he's trying to say. Thank you. You're welcome. And thanks to your whole family. Down a dumpling. I'll take that well taste out of your mouth. It's, it's just bread. He's had a nut, he's had a brain, and now he's chasing it with a dumpling. Is that's it? just regular. Yeah, from. That's, it's that's really... absolute nothing we uh -huh. uh -huh. It's squirrel semen. <laughs> I don't know if the kids love this gag. Sorry, middle girl. Just gonna take a little wander outside. Then Andy had a sudden urge to get outside and be amongst the trees. Ooh, we'll get the rest to go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> compliments to the chef. Uh, sorry I had to run. Uh, important business meeting to get to. If you can pass that on. Yeah, it's a nice try, Hando, but I don't think anyone's going to believe we have business meetings. Need a rather large swig after that. It's no different eating a squirrel than eating a rat. Yeah, but we don't eat rats. <laughs> so it's still a very weird thing to do. <laughs> uh, he may be having a good old laugh now, but later... Hamish Blake, nice to meet See you. CEO of Burger King Water. The laughter stops. It's business time. I like you. I like your style. That's what I want to hear. And next... Oh! Flying cars. <laughs> and a world first. Oh, this is incredible! We got a boy go! <laughs> Our next adventure took us to Sheep Mountain, Alaska, where the sheep look a bit bigger than ours, and after a cosy night at this lodge, it was time to give Hamish some mail and get the day underway. Oh boy. We are off to launch cars into the air. Mm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> why, why are we doing that? Uh, why are we doing that? Well, I'll explain that in the car. Can I bring my brekkie burrito? Sure. Can I finish it here? 
You know how I like making good time. Yes, OK, 801, sorry. Can I have my coffee? my coffee? <laughs> no. So I gave Haim ample time to finish his coffee. Mmm, relaxing holiday. All right, OK. And we hit the road where I filled Hamish in on why car launching exists. You know the 4th of July? I know the 4th of July. They do fireworks. They love fireworks. The sun doesn't go down in these parts. Yeah, we're very high, we're very north. <laughs> so instead of fireworks, they launch cars in the air. Ah, this is such a pristine, beautiful, untouched part of the world, mm -hmm. and it's crying out to have a car mm -hmm. sailing through the air and smashing onto the crisp below. <laughs> True, Han. And the man giving us this joy is Arnie, who has been launching cars skywards for nearly 15 years and it was pretty obvious we were in the right place when we arrived at his property. There's a car who I don't have big hopes for <laughs> in terms of longevity. How you doing? Hey, nice How to you? meet you. Good, Arnie. Yeah. Arnie, explain this to us. What is, what's happening right here? Well, so basically what we do is we have a 300-foot bluff over here, yeah. and with daylight, 24-hour daylight, you can't see fireworks, and... Uh, you don't get a lot of bang for buck in the air. Exactly. But, but I, I feel like you would with a car. Well, so basically what we do is we launch cars, uh, good running cars, uh, off the bluff. And how many people come to watch this? Uh, we had seven last year. Seven people? Oh, that was a joke. <laughs> I was okay. going to say, that was a joke. We had four. <laughs> we dream of seven. Well, they actually had 3,000. It's a community event that just keeps getting bigger, and for that reason, they run a lot of tests in the lead-up. Would y'all want to help us? Yeah, we'd love to. <laughs> OK, how about remove a windshield? Is there a particularly fun way to destroy the windscreen? Uh, with your feet, I'd say. Oh, you get in and kick yeah. it out. So try it. Ready? Three, two, one. Why are we wearing eye protection when our feet are clearly going to get ripped apart? This was bloody hard, and the guys were giving us some really helpful tips. Come on, guys, kick harder. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys, is this a joke? Is, can we normally no, do this? Ah, uh, right. The old make the Australians kick out a hard windscreen with their soft sneakers trick. Very good. But that wasn't the end of the surprises. Here's a big moose, OK? You ready? Whoa! <laughs> now see if you can get out. Yes! So the windshield was removed. It was bloody easy in the end. And Arnie had one more test. See if our windshield wipers work, please. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh... Okay. <laughs> I told you. I told you we wanted them. Which he actually was using as a distraction to nick off and get one more surprise ready. He was the master. Hold on, I think he's gonna uh, do some modification real quick. <laughs> cool. I feel like my eye protection is not going to help at this stage. Maybe there's a forklift in the car. Holy mackerel. And in this position, Arnie thought it was a good time to pop out and have a chat. Arnie, were we talking while you mentioned you were going to go and put a forklift through the car and lift it up? <laughs> no, they remind us we need to cut the exhaust, not forgotten. And should we have known that that would mean a forklift comes through the car and almost takes our head off? <laughs> Is that just assumed around here? Uh, just get, kind of get used to it. OK. I'm getting, okay. I'm getting more and more used to it. So okay. instead of down, Arnie decided to take us up. The boys took the muffler off and finally we were back on the ground. Good driving, Amber. See you, Blaine. Great to meet you. Really good to have you inside the car. And with a much louder vehicle... Right. Oh, yeah. It was time to get our car to the launch okay. site. Make a U-turn over here and follow me. You want air conditioning or are you going to... I think I'm good. Look at all these machines, each with a different way of killing us <laughs> in Arnie's hands. <laughs> How about that? Hey. Having been lined up by one of the best eyes yeah. in these parts... Hold! It was time to meet the actual expert, Arnie's son, and, I guess, heir to the car launching empire, Dustin. Dustin, your dad just called you gifted at this. Would you say you're gifted at this operation? I'm gifted at... sure. <laughs> well, throwing I suppose, throwing the, a car off a hill. Has, has one ever not got to the edge, like veered oh, yeah. off so badly? Yes. Oh, like into the rock? Or? See, see that big scar on the tree yeah. next behind the rock? I believe that was from a car. What percentage non-flights? Non well, we've been as bad as 50%. Yeah. And as good as 100. Right, right. So, okay. it's um, getting better as the years go by, but also we're doing more. You try. Yeah. With these odds, I was worried we might not even see our car fly. I swooped in to <laughs> hug Haim. Thank you, mate. And we went to the launch ramp to get a better look at things. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. She's a good drop. How far do they does get? It, does it make it to the pond? Well, we had a Subaru one time. End over end into the pond. Is a pond hit outstanding? A triumph? 
Yes, yes. Yeah, but fairly unlikely, as it seemed like they didn't even know where the car might take off from. Well, see that tree over there? One time, uh, a Skylark Buick hit that tree yeah. because it... It, uh, it veered. So you never know which direction. We don't want anybody out here. And that's why we tie the steering wheel, so we we're hoping for a good trajectory. We hope. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Oh, OK, so hope was the main policy. That's all right. We've been there many times. So it was back up the hill to ask the gifted one his thoughts. How do you feel about it? Uh, I'd like to do a test run. A test run? Yeah. OK. Remember to stop! I do not have that is the a guts to ballsy, do that. Ballsy test run. But Dustin was happy, so he locked off the steering wheel and looped the ratchet strap underneath the throttle. No, you, don't, you won't have to jam it on because it's self-tightening. Great. Well, so no one had to yeah. jump out while it's halfway down. That's better than the system I was thinking of. I'll be honest with you, ever since you showed us the pond... We want a ponder. In our heart, we want a ponder. We were just saying before off-camera, God, wouldn't it be great to get a ponder? What are the chances of a ponder? It might tumble to the pond, but it's not going to land. If it tumbles yeah. to the pond, does it have the same respect as a ponder? It's a pond dive is a pond dive. <laughs> is a ponder. Is a pond dive. <laughs> so it's the opposite of the Olympics. Whether you tumble in or dive, we'll still count it. <laughs> so we had a goal. Could we get a ponder? Arnie took his position at the bottom of the bluff, and Hamish and I were placed here probably a little too close to the action, given the recent advice. So you never know which direction. We don't want anybody out here. No, 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 we have that little shrub to protect us. OK, we're set up down here, so we're ready for the count down here whenever y'all are ready up there. Uh, roger that, Big Papa. This is Hamish and Angie at the launch ramp. How do you copy? Launch ramp is ready down there. Oh, he's, he's just, he's just using, using the loudspeaker. <laughs> Copy that, Big Eagle. We are sending the gifted one to the car, getting ready to rip the ratchet. <laughs> all good, Dustin? Uh, yeah, we're all ready up here. Oh, sorry, Matt, I didn't know you had a walkie-talkie as well. We really couldn't sort out these comms. Hey, um, if the car's coming straight for us... Mm. Yo, Yo, I'm just gonna you you're on. Okay, so we're gonna start the car and, uh, might as well start your countdown. Oh, gosh. Here okay, we're we have green light. It was exciting and a little terrifying Seven, given a driverless car would six, be hurtling towards us. Five. Oh, hang on, we had the shrub. Three, two, two one. Fair to say, we played it cool. <laughs> we got a ponder, baby! But we were pretty happy. <laughs> we got a ponder! We got a ponder! <laughs> hey, Papa Bear, we're addicted. We got one question for you. What is that, King Wasabi? You don't have another spare car, do you? Are you serious? We were, and he did. And the discovery of this next vehicle led to a whole different type of launch. We've never done a pizza car. I like that a lot. You were looking at two guys that had just become addicted to car launching and were on their way to try and find another vehicle to send off a cliff. Is this her? This is her. I like that a lot. It's a pizza car. Have you ever done a pizza car? We've never done a pizza car. Wow. It's final delivery, hey? <laughs> Allow us. It can be hazardous delivering pizza, so should we make some type of a box or something? Or secure it, I guess. You know, we should try and actually deliver a pizza. Do you, should we, do you reckon we should put a pizza in there? That's do not a bad idea. Arnie, it's it a great idea. Just because your car's a write-off doesn't mean dinner's off. So that became the plan. We pulled the car around the front, Hamish ordered a pizza. We will get one 
pepperoni, just one large. We popped some baking paper on top to seal in the heat. Thankfully, I was able to wear a welding mask in case some paper flicked up towards my face. It didn't. Then Arnie gave us some rubber straps so we could secure the delicious cargo. How do you feel about that? That is so secure. <laughs> that is really secure. I'm really excited about that. Oh, she drives like an absolute nightmare. Really? <laughs> Looks great. And we drove her down to a different starting position. So how does this thing work, Dustin? So it kind of clamps on the rail? Yep. This spins around. I'll put that in the rail so you don't have to lock the steering wheel or you still do? Nope. So this rail just does all the steering and then it's going off that dirt mound. Yep. And suddenly this was more yeah. awesome. Okay, now just let go of the wheel. It drives, absolutely drives like it's on rails. It's unbelievable, the handling. Very smooth. We made our way down to the bottom of the bluff to await delivery of a pepperoni pizza from the heavens. All right, we got everything in position down here. How are you guys doing up there? We got some fresh hot calzones. Could we do a delivery on a fresh hot calzone? As a matter of fact, we got one strapped to a seat. We can send it your way. Guys, this is the time when you're in your house and you go, gee, the pizza should yeah, be check here the app. soon, shouldn't it? Check the app. <laughs> the guy's heading straight for a cliff. <laughs> Last checks were made to the delivery vehicle. All righty, here we go. And finally, it was time. Here we go. Ten, nine, nine. Eight, Would this seven, pizza survive the launch and be edible at the end? Four, three, two, one. one. Come on, this Here delicious pizza. Here we go, boys. Pan fried, air cool, crash proof. It hadn't been the smoothest of landings. The airbags, oh, airbags, airbags, gone. airbags went off. Oh, fucking. In fact, it doesn't get rougher. <laughs> and we had grave concerns for the pizza. Go check out the pizza, boys! Marty, this is incredible! We wondered how exactly had its journey played out. Well, that's awesome. So far, so good. God, looks like we're going to see exactly what. Oh, no. It remains a mystery. Do you have eyes on Pete's? I mean, the, the whole engine's back... dropped out the bottom. The whole back ripped out. Uh, yes! It, it's actually bloody good! We kind of need the jaws of life, don't we? It's just strapped perfectly there. I want you to get a hand on that pizza. OK, I got the hand of the pizza. Tell me when you got it. And using the jaws of pizza life. Yep. Oh, yes, we've done it. I will now release the pizza, always cut away from the body. Don't tell me. Open it up. Oh my gosh, it's almost perfect. Cheers, man. The world's only crash proof pizza. Still warm. Oh, that's delicious. I actually prefer it this way. It's perfect. Ah, oh, perfect. Pizza to you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> We've proved it. Crash pizza is just the same as regular old pizza. Except for the old bit of broken glass. That was annoying, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. But apart from that, what a day. Just a few hours' drive from that beautiful view was another one. God, look at that cheekbone structure. And also the town of Whittier. Home to a harbour and this hotel that looks gorgeous in a drone shot. A perfect place for an adventure. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? It actually is really nice. <laughs> nice. But... Here you go. Andy, you got that look in your eyes and I can clearly see you want to start a new business with me. There's the look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only a true friend knows it. That's yeah. the look. Well, relax, bro. I got a cool business we can run together. P.S. Note my use of the word cool will turn out to be very clever. I want to start a business? Depends what it is. Good point, Ando. Here's the thing. Companies have been set up in these parts to capture tiny glacial icebergs. They do this because swanky New York cocktail bars want the ice for their drinks. Important point. These bergs have already carved off and are floating in the ocean, so it is not impacting the environment. Yeah, that's fine. Here's what I was thinking. We get a berg, mm -hmm. we melt it down mm -hmm. into water, uh -huh. we take it down to LA, we sell it as ultra-premium iceberg water. I am in on that. I'm glad Ando was in, because I'd already thought of a pretty snazzy business name. Berg King Water. Got business cards made up. I'm Hamish Blake, obviously. You're yeah. Andy Lee. 
Sounds a lot like Burger King. Completely different. So I'm in charge of business affairs, logistics, accounts, and miscellaneous. What are you in charge of? It doesn't. I mean, it's just a business. CEO founded brand. It just seems business like card. I'm doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Like, but I've played to our strengths here. Yeah. And I am the Burger King. You can just see me. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. With the crown on in the background. So I'm not even a part of the advertising. Yeah, I'm going to put the accounts guy on the billboard. Anyway, I issued Andy an accounts book and told him to mark every expense that came up. This is a real business. We got the water, we get it to LA, yeah. bundle up all our expenses, and then I guess the idea is we sell it for more than it cost. Yeah. The business was up and running. Wow, Burger King, I love it already. We just needed the product. Alaskan Radio! And the customers. Have you heard of us? No, no, no. And no. success would be guaranteed. <laughs> Bird King water was afloat, and we were off to meet our mentor, Scott, an iceberg hunter who had his own operation. Scott, how are you going? Nice to meet you. Okay. I have a business card. There you go. Hamish oh, Banks, yes. CEO yes. of Bird King Enterprises. Whoa, Bird King, I love it already. Bird King, uh, Alaskan iceberg water. And this um, is Andy Lee. He's one of my accounts guy, affairs. miscellaneous. Um, so my accountant. No. <laughs> you got the card built. Yeah. Before we got the iceberg. <laughs> That's what we thought you could help us with, Scott. You are, you capture icebergs. That's right. Is this a thing? I didn't uh, even know this was a thing. It is a thing, and I totally sell craft cocktail ice made from, oh, right. from the... icebergs. So glacier ice is the densest ice there is because all the air has been compressed out. So now all you have is super dense ice and the, the air that's left in is compressed air from 10,000 years ago. Okay, so there's no real point in having the warm version then. No, no, no. Well, the no warm, that... uh, warm is a bad word <laughs> you'll, have to you'll have to excuse my accounts guy. He's not really... You mean melted? Melt yeah. The melted version. Yes. Well, it is, it's got a, it's 10,000 years old. It's the purest water on Earth. Well, it has that fresh snowball flavor, OK? And that's, you know... Actually, you right, that's yeah. the ad. Mm. <laughs> Gee, that was good. That's the kind of stuff I was probably about to say as head of marketing. Anyway, it was off to get a berg. We boarded Scott's boat and started the 60-minute trip to where the glaciers spit out icebergs. My accounts guy still needed some convincing on the business idea, though. Mate, name another product that takes 10,000 years to make. Coal? What's that? Coal, is that the... Yeah, that's good. OK, well, no time to hear any more nitpicking. Let's move on to logging some expenses. $65 for the sandwiches and for two lunch packs. OK. And then I might take... 200 petty cash. No, no, we don't petty cash. But if incidentals? No. <gasps> yes. I'll take care of petty cash. You can come and ask me for it. No, I won't. I'm the CEO. <laughs> and uh, if the tax man comes around asking if I spent petty cash on uh, a scarf for my wife, you know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Log it. OK, OK. Women's scarf reluctantly logged, and moments later, we'd arrived at our destination a place where a 10,000-year-old glacier carves itself off into the sea. It's so beautiful. That's what I got into the business for. That and the petty cash. Great. It was time to pick the perfect berg. What about that guy through there? Something like that we wouldn't want. You just want something that it looks like a, a huge bowling ball is what we're looking for. But like a busy night at strike bowling, the right bowling ball is very tricky to find. But then I saw her. Scott, what about this guy right here? Can we try this one, Mike? I like it. I Fresh knew it. Berg. Fresh Fresh berg. For a berg. Miscellaneous. Right. <laughs> well done. That was some good miscellaneous spotting. I mean, we've got some clear there, too. So Do we not? Good. Do we... Clear's good. Clear's good. Oh. Clear's good. <laughs> Which we knew. Of course, we knew that, but that's good to hear. OK. Brave and unquestioning, we prepared to capture a berg. So how do we get it? I'll show you. <laughs> no. What is that? Well, that seems a little ominous. And for good reason, Ham. The only way to really check this out is that we get in the water and, and you know, have somebody kind of Hang feel on, sorry, around. Whoa, 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 what was that? We got what's called a survival suit. You don't get wet. Righto. Get into freezing water in a weird suit. Well, as long as they look cool, we're in. How, does that feel comfortable? Do, could you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared. <laughs> So these definitely float. Like, I, I've just got visions of hopping in and just going... <laughs> <laughs> Must be worn with an approved life jacket. That's what it reads on his thing. For, that's just for, um, you know... Safety? Despite fatal concerns, we prepared for launch. This is the Bird King. If this is the last known recording of me, I guess I perish doing what I loved, harvesting those sweet, sweet birds for that sweet, sweet coin. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> <laughs> 
Haim seemed to be alive, so I joined him in the freezing water and we ran after our choice berg. <laughs> Perfect. I claim this berg in the name of Berg King Enterprises. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Just bring it on over. OK, swim it over, Andy. Oh, thanks, mate. A true leader delegates. Oh, Push it over. I'm sorry. Good boy. Oh. If this isn't miscellaneous, <laughs> I don't know what is. I used my momentum to push it, and now I'm going backwards, and I've got the coldest crutch in the world. Thank you for your service, Andy. Oh. You were a good company employee. I shall now run Bird King all by myself. I'll never forget you, Andy. Thanks for your help with the business. But to my surprise, Andy eventually dawdled back. He's coming back. Cancel the wake. And unlike Kate Winslet in Titanic, I felt there was enough room for him to come on board. <laughs> then, with my super CEO strength, the use of a winch, yeah, just let the machine do the work. I single-handedly pulled the iceberg onto the boat. There it is, boys. We'd done it. Phase one of the business venture was complete. Congrats to the CEO. And I immediately ordered Captain Mike to return us to land to process this iceberg. Uh, to be clear, Mike the captain took no orders from Hamish throughout the entire day and he just returned us to the dock as planned. Back at the wharf. Ready on three. We had some trouble getting the berg off the boat. One, two, three. Oh. Berg! Yeah! Oh. Keep it up. Oh. Ah! I've been skewered! <laughs> yep, I'd been skewered by one of these things. The first thing in the CEO handbook, if your staff need it, and only if they ask for it, you look at their bum. Fine. What? Little, little digging. Looks like a little snake bite. <laughs> well, unfortunately for Andy, that's not covered by work cover. Nor would any injury Andy sustained during the cutting be covered either, because I really felt like legally this was a hobby Andy was doing outside work hours. I like this. You like that a piece? A lot. And with that, we'd done it. We had a berg in a box, and it was back to the processing plant. Slash hotel bathroom. That's our melting facility. Hang on. This is our melting wand. Bit of an industry term there. Can't tell you what it really is. I don't think putting it in a bath where naked people have been resting their bits. No, is going to that's not nice. what we do for this company. No, we care more about quality than that. And I was right. We needed a clean container for processing. So I raced down to grab one from the bar. Appreciate it. Thank you. But while I was there, something caught my eye. Here you go. The most expensive whiskey they had. <laughs> Chuck it on their company. Whiskey. Well, don't put it as whiskey. Put it as factory supplies. Sorry. Expenses were really mounting. Isn't this amazing? There's air bubbles in there that are 10,000 years old. So, like, a mammoth could have farted and it could be trapped in there. That would be it. We could be getting mammoth cupcaked <laughs> in a second. <laughs> it was time to begin. So my head of miscellaneous started chipping off the berg and the complex ice-to-water processing procedure commenced. And melted by hand. Problem was, this was really slow. We're doing a good job here. Thankfully, I empower my staff... ..business partner... ..to have ideas of their own. What if we filled this with hot water? Heat the outside of the tin? We could just leave it there. Might be a nice time to have a staff meeting. Oh, this was working a treat. You know what? Staff meeting, everyone! You know what you reminded me of out there? A Berg prince who may one day grow up... ..to be a king. ..to be a king. So um, put yourself down for 500 petty cash. <laughs> Put me down for 500 while you're at it. I'm not giving you petty cash. Uh, tight as a vice. Back in the factory, processing was in full swing. Let me just measure it. Yeah, that'd be that. Hand measured. And after several delicious staff meetings later, we'd done it. Bird King Premium Glacial Alaskan Iceberg Water had a full inventory of six glorious bottles. That's 10,000 years of perfection. Nice line. I wouldn't hire an idiot for head of marketing, mate. Anyway, all we had to do now was get to LA and sell it. Which required two not cheap flights, might I add. Don't worry about that, Ando. We're going to make a fortune and wrap this whole thing up next. Having hand bottled the premium iceberg water by hand, we headed to LA to sell it to the premium water market. We stayed the night in quite a nice mid-range corporate hotel. Another expense. And it was time for a big pitch day. Who are we going to again? Like it's a high-end restaurant but with connections to nightclubs. So okay. That's our market. Ultra premium, high-end. Yeah, okay. Cool. How many have you tried? Was that? How many 
bottles of water. No, no, no. How many restaurants do you try oh, to line yeah. up? Yeah, lots, got... lots. This so is, this trust one. me, this is, it's great. We've got a nibble. <laughs> on the way to our pitch meeting, I asked Andy to stop her for one last thing that I knew would assist us. Give me eight minutes. You've got eight. Thanks. <laughs> Can I have some petty cash? No. It's like I've got this real tight-ass dad that won't give me any money for the movies. Didn't matter. I've got one of the joint credit cards. Yes. I have a very important business meeting coming up. Yes. For myself and my friend. OK. I need two cool outfits. You got it. That say, I don't need your money. OK. But then also at the same time say, but I got it. willing to do a deal. Well, you came to the right place. OK, great. There's right. my card. Oh, fantastic. As you can see. Bird King. Exactly. Bird King. All right. Bird King, Alaskan right. Water. <laughs> have you heard of us? No, 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 no. Bird you will, mate. How much is this one? Money's not really a problem. Uh, 398. <laughs> I'll give you 500. <laughs> <laughs> they say good things come to those who wait. I don't reckon that's true in this sense. I can't believe Andy was complaining out there, because I was looking after him as well. He's careful with the money, so he's tight with the finances. Right. So I think a tight shirt sort of says... That makes fairly, sense. It goes... Fairly tight with the finances. Together. That makes sense. Would he ever wear a scarf with a shirt? Like a... Like an ascot? Mm. I don't know what that is, but definitely yes, please. Definitely. I'm going to show you a few ideas here. That's a cool. I like you. I like your style. This is a long eight minutes. This is doctor's waiting time. It'll just be eight minutes. Four days later. For silk, it should not be skin tight. Tell him that. It should have I a little tiny bit. I won't tell him that. OK. Tell him the opposite. I love your honesty. With two stylish yet professional outfits, I left the store. Does this say nighttime businessman to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta kill him with this. That's what I wanna hear. And gave Ando his new look. How much? Just for once in your life, don't think about the dollars and think about the cents. <laughs> you spent two grand? Under 2100. Andy. You should have heard the way Mike was saying, you've got to spend money to make money, you've got to turn up. Yes, you're a salesman. Yeah, and so are we now with awesome nighttime businessman wear. I genuinely think we're an honest shot to sell all six. And then we're done. We were off to our all-important sales pitch, and just before we went in, I had some final bits of flourish. I got this made for the merchandise. I haven't put that in for expenses. Right. How much is that? 250 plus 100 for the lid. Cool. I don't Isn't think it? we want the lid. <laughs> Andy, we are having the lid because it cost 100 bucks to 3D print and it works perfectly with the dried ice I'd got. Why do we need dry ice? It's when I open the case. You're not meant to touch it with your hands, are you? No. Is it cold? Oh, geez, it's very cold. Yeah, well, it's dry ice. <laughs> <laughs> It'll burn your hands. Oh, that looked awesome. Can I be clear? Sure. The idea for this adventure is to recoup our money, isn't it? OK. I wouldn't mind adding a little 10% prof marge. OK, with the desired prof marge also included, I did the maths and gave Hamish the final sale price for our meeting. It's $1,100 a bottle. What, what's that face for? Making money. Yeah, no, we're not going to. <laughs> You're like, Are we making $100 you, a bottle? Yeah, you, make, you gave me a look like, great. No, I think this is bad news. What do you mean? Because I don't think that's worth $1,100. Well, we were about to find out. I'd arranged to meet Craig at the Arbor, a high-end restaurant that I knew would lap this thing up. Hello, I'm Andy. Hamish Blake. Nice to meet you. CEO of Burn King Water. It's Hollywood. They live for excess and a chance to flaunt their wealth. Follow me, gentlemen. Craig sent us down and the pitch begun. We could do this. Let me ask you a question. Who currently provides your ultra high-end Alaskan Glacier water. I don't have high-end Alaskan Glacier water, my friend. Good news. <laughs> Craig, I've got some great news for you. The drought is broken. What we're about to show you with Alaskan Berg King water mm. is the last truly pure water on Earth. The last piece of perfect water on the planet. Behold. This was it. He was on the hook. A chance to make our money back and prove that my business idea was a success. And then when I went to present the bottle to Craig, I guess I realised for the first time that someone might not need $1,100 water at their restaurant.
Gentlemen. <laughs> yes? <laughs> It was clearly a no. We'd wasted Craig's time. I think it was the giggling. So we packed up our things and got out of there. Pleasure, my friend. Honest bit of feedback? The, the outfits? I love them. Thank Keep you. Keep it up. Thanks, man. Thank you. Always good to take a positive out of a meeting. Look, blind oh, I know the giggling. Let me, let me speak. I know I shouldn't have got the giggles. I, I actually went in thinking we might be able to sell it. So did I. Blind Hope took me in there. Grave embarrassment took the power of speech away from me. And I now knew some tough decisions had to be made. 3.30? So I set up what I knew would be our final meeting with a business advisor called Kevin, and I left Hamish in the dark about it. Well, I'm pleased to see you taking such an active role in the business, finally. You guys want water or anything? Fine. Do you have any Berg King water? Not, no. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Kevin. Andy. Kevin showed us to his boardroom, and we told him about the water. <laughs> I've never heard of an $1,100 bottle of water, and I don't know how many people can afford that. So, I mean, are there other things that I'm missing? Like, can we you... Were, we're, th we're sort of yeah, like... Yeah, other things he's missing? Well, we're, we're, because we're... this is the point, Ham. That's why Kevin's in here. I would wanted to ask Kevin... Yes. ..and wanted you to break it to Hamish. How would we go about shutting a company down? Oh, my God. And how would we go about liquidating something like this? Well, you can file for bankruptcy. Yeah. Um, Oh that will God. get the creditors off you if you, if you owe people money. Um, that's we mostly just owe ourselves money. <laughs> well, you owe me money. You owe the, the bank money because no, I've been putting a lot on the credit card. Sorry, Kevin. No, 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 it's okay. The, the main thing is just shut your doors. I mean, if, if, if every day you're operating, you're losing money, mm. the, the best thing to do is just to stop. So you're... Let me get this straight. So you're recommending... Is that what I'm hearing? You bought me here. Judas. You bought, you bought me here to Judas the company. I didn't bring you here to Judas the company. I, I bought you here for to euthanize a, it. A, no, for a shot of reality. But you put your a, a scarf for your wife. <laughs> and I bought you a scarf. <laughs> nice scarf. It's a dawning on you. You for a water company. You, <laughs> we, spend a lot, we spend a lot on scarves. <laughs> The outfits that we're, we're wearing, finished. Kevin. Mm -hmm. We're finished, Anna. Close he, the books. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. We spent $2,069 on these outfits that we're wearing right now. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably not a necessary expense at this time. And that's where this ended. We are liquidating the company. Haim? Yes, Ando, it's true. Everyone, please head to birdkingwater.com where you can buy all our assets, which, weirdly for a water company, are mostly clothes. There's something for everyone. Everything must go. No reasonable offer refused. Would suit buyers wanting to start their own high-end Alaskan glacial water company. Next time, the third and final part of our perfect holiday. We're going on a tandem bike ride. <gasps> Let's play ball! Holy... Yeah, yeah. Puss, puss, puss! Tandem is two teams and time to the top of two trees. Ooh, I'm up for that. Yeah, same. See you there.